So you typically like to pull title when you list the property. Now, here's the problem with that. The Dodd-Frank Act, which we're getting ready to talk about here in about 20 minutes, has a rule in it that says the seller cannot force the buyer to use a company that the seller has already chosen. So if the seller pulls title work when I list it from Chicago title, the buyer literally can come in with an offer and say, I want to use security title. So all of that preliminary title work that got pulled by Chicago title, they don't get paid for because we move it to security and close over here. So there are problems with both of these. I will tell you the most common is to go ahead and order it when you list. Most title companies now understand the cost of doing business that probably two or three out of 10 are going to get pulled away from them by the buyer when the buyer writes an offer. The only thing that title companies hang their hat on is at some point, they are going to be the one that pulls it from another title company when the buyer says, I want to use Chicago. So it's a give and take, all right? So typically, you order it when you list the property, there could still be problems, or you could wait till you get the offer, there's still problems, all right? Are we okay on the title? The affidavit, they pull the payoff, it's called a payoff or a mortgage reduction. And then they also calculate the real estate taxes. That's why we need to know the date. Now, what is the real estate's, the real estate agent's role in the closing? What is your role? Your role is very simple. Bring me my money, all right? Don't make me get my pimp hand out, no. Your role literally, literally, plus tax, literally is you will be there at the closing because remember the minimum level of services says I have to be accessible for questions about the deal. So literally when you go into closing, there's going to be a long conference table. Your client's going to sit on this side of the table with you, and that's why we call them a side. Seller side, buyer side, all right? We'll sit on one side of the table. My client will sit closest to the title guy. And if you've done your job correctly, you will be useless at closing because that means you've already answered all the questions your client has, all right? It sounds funny, but it's true. Typically what happens, we sit down on the opposite end of the table and we sit across from each other and we're like, so how's business going? You doing okay? Did you watch that episode of the same? Oh, we're done? All right, let's go. Because your client knows it all, you've already told them everything. Just in case your client goes, hey dude, what's this form? And then you're there to go, Oh, that's the lead-based paint form that we signed. Remember we talked about your house? Oh, okay. That's what your job is and you should still be there. So you must, under Indiana rule, go to all the closings. If you can't go, then you gotta call me and I'll go, which is literally what's going on tomorrow. One of my agents can't go to the closing, so he called me and says, hey, I can't go. I said, okay, I will go for you. So I'm gonna go into the closing tomorrow with technically my clients that I haven't met yet because Josh has been doing all of this, all right? So your job is to represent our client or represent me with our client at the closing, but technically you'll be useless because if you did your job right, you've answered all their questions. Now all they're gonna do is sign. So that's your major role at the closing table. Now, the lender also has an interest 
in this deal, the lender wants to make sure they are in fact first lien, so they too will get a stack of documents very similar to what the buyer got to prove that the lender is in fact first lien. So they're gonna get the mortgage pay off of the other guy, they're gonna get the clear title, all of that. Sometimes if you buyer uses a mortgage broker, he will come to the closing as well. Why? Because that's when mortgage brokers get paid as well, just like real estate brokers. Plus, it's his chance as well as your chance to get that last little bit of schmoozing in with the client because the happiest either side will be is as you're walking out of the closing. You know, you will skip out of there zippity doo da with your buyer and go, hey, congratulations. Here's my card. If you've got people that need to buy, have them call me. All right, so, and the mortgage broker, same thing. Congratulations on your purchase. If you know someone else buying, here's my card. So it also has our last chance to kind of smooth with the client before we go our separate ways. Okay. Now the IRS has an interest in the property because the seller may owe taxes on this property on the capital gains. And just because I can, what's the limit for a married couple on their own or occupied property? 500,000, remember? Yeah. That's where this number comes into play. Because the title company, or the, I'm sorry, misspoke. The closing officer will literally ask the sellers, is this your primary residence? And they'll say, yeah and they will fill out paperwork right there to the irs saying hey they only made 300 grand it's their primary residence they're married therefore you would owe no taxes on that capital gains that thing we talked about way a long time ago here's where it plays out in the irs documents now when we go to closing they close in one of two ways. And the one that was the most common up until about three weeks ago is now falling out of favor. It's called the face-to-face -face closing. This, I will tell you, used to be, and probably will go back to it, the most common. This is where the buyer and the seller show up together the seller sit on one side of the table, buyer sit on the other side of the table. And like these pictures are, we literally sit face to face and they talk to each other. All right. This is the best method because it allows for other things to happen at the closing that are ancillary. All right. One of the things everybody forgets, and usually is really important, we hear this question all the time. The buyer's gonna look over at the seller and go, when's trash day? That's an important thing that nobody captures. What's the code for the garage? Have you got the keys? So all of this stuff happens really well when you're face to face, because you'll see a, a seller slide the garage door open. Here's the two garage doors. Here's a key to the shed. Here's our three keys to the front door. The paper boy shows up on Tuesday, trash days on Thursday, and watch out for Mrs. Jones across the street because she's wacko with her cats, all right? So all of that knowledge kind of gets transferred at face to face. In that, it is ran by what they call the closing officer, the closing officer or the title rep, or the closer. This is a person who is employed by the title company to actually facilitate the closing itself. They typically sit at the head of the table 
And when they walk in, they've got the stack of documents. And this closer is a public notary. They have the power to notarize documents. So typically what you see, the first thing they ask for is they look at the buyer and the seller and they go, hey, I need IDs for both of you so that they can check, remember, acknowledgement. They wanna check to make sure the person is who they say they are and that they're doing it without duress. So the closing officer is a notary, they will check and they make copies of the driver's license and all of that, then they hand it back and say, okay, let's do the closing. We also, you've heard that you can hear the term passing papers because what the closer does is literally go, okay, here's the papers and they'll give to the buyer side and the seller side and they'll say, sign here, do this, sign, you need to sign this, do this. And then when the buyer's done, you will see them notarize, they'll notarize and they turn the document over and they just keep going until all the documents move from this stack to this stack and then they're done. Then what they do is they're like, okay, give me five minutes and they take that stack of documents and they leave. And this is where all the conversation about the crash day and the neighbors and all happens as you're sitting there. She or he then comes back with documents in each hand and say, hey, congratulations on your purchase. And she hands the deed to the buyer who reaches up and does what? Boop. Property just transferred. Here, congratulations, seller. Here's your check. And then agents, here are your closing packet, which have a check in it as well. That check will be made out to the brokerage, not you. So you will get a check made to the modulin group, at which time you will then come back to the office, whether it's Remax, KW, Smith and Company, or us, doesn't matter. You will give those documents to the company. I will take the check made out to the modulin group, and then I would write you a check from my bank account based on whatever split we agreed on. And that's that whole math that we did a couple chapters ago. You bring me a check for five grand, I write you a check for 2,500, that's your half, I keep the rest, all right? So the closing agent does all of this stuff back and forth. Now, here's another pet peeve, ranks in the top 10. There is a fee to do this. It is called the closing fee. A lot of buyers and sellers get this confused with this term called closing costs. Closing costs are the sum of all of the fees. You got a recording fee, you got a courier fee, you got a closing fee. See what I'm saying? Costs are some generic made up name that encompasses everything. One of the things in a closing cost is this thing called a closing fee, which is what you pay to the title company for that person to actually do all the work. So in our purchase agreement, it typically says that the buyer and seller will split the closing fee. I get sellers all the time that are like, I'm not paying half his closing costs. No, 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 no. Not his closing costs. It's this one fee you will split. Typically it ranges from 300 to 400 bucks. Each side pays half because that closing agent is working for both sides of the table. They're collecting the seller signature and the buyer signature and making copies for both. So both, both sides usually pay half of the closing agent's salary. It's what the title company charges to actually do the work. It's called that's the not, closing fee. That's not the same as the attorney fee then? No, an attorney, all title companies have to have an attorney as an owner or a partner 
because he is going to read the title work to make sure there's nothing wrong. He's going to read the deed, all that Northwest quadrant of the North. That's what that does. And he's going to say, yes, that is correct. Okay. And one of the fees that you pay is an attorney fee of 50 to 75 bucks for him to preview or her to preview all of the closing stuff to make sure it's right. That's a separate fee. This is the closing fee is the fee the company gets to actually do the job. All right. Now, there is the second way to close, which is becoming more and more popular. It is called closing in escrow. Closing in escrow. Closing in escrow happens because both parties cannot be face to face. Either there's a timing issue, there's a location issue, or currently, as we're recording this, there could be this little pandemic issue. All right. So no one wants to sit across the table. Typically, in the old days, like three weeks ago, banks are sitting in California. They're not going to send someone to Indianapolis, so they would close an escrow. Sellers can't come in at three, so they'll go in at nine, but the buyer can't come in at nine. He'll get in at three, so they can't be there together. So what happens is one side would go in, sign all of their documents, and then the title company would take those documents and lock them in a safe until the other side can come in. And then they pull them out of the safe and they go, okay, these have already been signed by the seller. Now let's go through Mr. Buyer and you sign them. Then he makes copies and gives a set of the copies to the people that are there. And he would call you and say, Hey, the buyers came in and signed. I know you were here six hours ago, but now you need to come back and get your paperwork and your check and pick up your client's stuff. So you now go back and get the stuff and all the documents have been spread out. All right. 